Right, what else do we have? We got the tax withholding estimator. Now the tax withholding estimator is designed to help you to make the proper withholdings, but it can also be used as like a practice tool to kind of estimate your taxes in different scenarios. And it basically has to be like a projection type of tool. So let me do a quick recap on, on how this works and why you might be able to use it. Note that uh, we, we file the taxes at uh, after by April 15th, following the year that we're working on. So if we're looking at 2023 tax year, we're going to file it in 2024. But note that the design of the tax system is similar to the, the design of payroll taxes in that the form shouldn't actually result in any refund or payment as it was originally constructed. Basically, the original thought process was we're going to make we're going to have you pay throughout the year as you earn the money. And then when you file the tax return in the following year, you're just going to say, hey, look, this is the taxes I owe. Here's my recap of the income that I earned and I've already paid you the money. And therefore, it's just an informational return. That's what basically happens on payroll taxes, although on a quarterly basis for the federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare on Form 941. You don't typically have a payment or refund when filing those returns. You're just recapping. However, the tax code became so complex that that's impossible to do. So you can't you can't really guess exactly what the amount of tax that you're going to owe is because there's too many variable components in calculating the income tax. So so that means so what are you going to do then? So they're, they're going to say you still have to pay during the year because the IRS wants their money as you earn it, not after you earn it. And they also they also are skeptical, I would think that if you wait till you actually owe the money, you're not going to have the money because you would have already spent it. So they want to take the money away from you before it even gets in your hands, right? That's kind of seems to be kind of the plan here. So that means that they're that you're going to be paying through W-2 withholdings, most likely, and 1099 and possibly estimated payments uh, throughout the year. And what you'd shoot for, what you try to do is pay a little bit too much, and why do you try to pay a little bit too much? Not just because you want a cool refund at tax time. The IRS, the IRS tries to then claim as though they're the one giving you money at the end of the year. No, they're refunding. They're refunding your overpayment. They overtook the money before. Why would you shoot for a refund? Because you don't want to get hit with the penalties. That's the idea. So if you underpay, they hit you with the stick of penalties and interest, which you're trying to avoid. So you try to overpay a little bit in all the tables that we use for the W-2 withholdings for payroll taxes when you calculate your W-4 and so on are designed to be a little bit over so that, so that you will get a refund, not just to make you happy, although that might be part of it from the government's perspective because they look like the good guy giving you money back and the employer looks like the bad guy because they're the one forced to be the tax collector. But the real idea is that you're trying to avoid the stick of penalties and interest if you underpay. So so it used to be like you can kind of say, well, if I'm married and I have so many dependents, I can get a reasonable calculation based on my W-4 will help me out with the tax tables and I can figure that out. But and but now it's got a way more complex in part because the family structures are, are kind of different and the, the credits and whatnot, earned income tax credit, child tax credits are dependent on marital status and number of children and that kind of stuff, which really, you know, complicates things. So at one point in time, if you had a family unit, most families had like a one income family and it was pretty like a married couple, one income family or, or someone is single, that's pretty straightforward and they have one job, right? But these days, people often have multiple jobs, right? You're probably working, you might have worked three different jobs throughout the year and then also had gig work or something like that and have a spouse also doing a similar type of thing. And then you could have, you know, the, the, the number of dependents fluctuates a lot more as well. Therefore, it's a lot more hard. It's a lot more difficult to figure out exactly what your withholdings will be. 
So you really need what you really need to calculate the withholdings is a projection software. You basically need tax software in order to make a projection out into the future to try to figure out what your withholdings should be. And that's basically what they did on the IRS website. So now you can figure out your withholdings. You might want to look at it at the end of the year, put in all the information in there, which is basically making a projection, which will then help you to determine what your withholdings should be, which you can adjust at the end of the year or whenever you need to, to get the proper withholdings out of your W-2s or the proper payments that you need to make to avoid getting hit with the penalties and interest. Now, because it's becomes, you know, basically an, a, a software tool though, you, can, you might also use it in the course or something like this, or to, to do projections into the future to run different scenarios. You can use it similar to using LACERT, in other words. You can put in the certain assumptions into the tax software and, and allow it to do, give you a projection into the future, possibly. So it's a pretty interesting tool. They've, it's a lot better than it used to be. So you might want to check that one out.